name is Roland Appel. I'm standing here in front of a primary school in Unterensingen, that's about 25 kilometers southeast of Stuttgart. And on this roof, that's one of the first combinations of green roof and photovoltaics, which will be the topic of my seminar, which is following. I myself, I'm working as green roof engineer the last 25 years here at the company Zinco. I'm the technical director and, was, and I was responsible for developing a lot of green roof systems for different applications. Also, we have a lot of technical in innovations as thermal insulating green roofs, as fall, not fall protection systems without penetration of the water roofing membrane which can be integrated in a, in a green roof build up and also this combination of green roof and photovoltaics is some things we are working with. Beside my job at Zinco, I'm president of IGRA and we promote green roofs around the world. We made seminars, congress and have publications. Now to the topic green roofs and solar use, which will be the content of the following presentation. Welcome to the presentation Combining Green Roofs with Photovoltaics. But before I start the main presentation, I want to say some words about the IGRA. The IGRA was founded in 2003 and the main aim was to promote the green roof idea. But also there is knowledge transfer, sensitization of the public and stimulation of international standards. Besides this we do networking, we make some conferences and we have a newsletter. If you want to see more about the IGRA, look at our homepage. Now let's come to our main topic, combining green roofs with photovoltaics. There are two possibilities to use the solar power on flat roofs. The one way is to make hot water and it doesn't matter as you can see if you work with flat plate collectors or with evacuated tube collectors, both is possible. The second way is to produce electricity on green roofs. But the first facilities were more a field experiment than a proved system. For example, the shadow of the plants was a problem which had to be solved. One reason that nowadays there are some systems on the market which make it possible to combine green roofs with photovoltaics is that in some development plans was written that it isn't necessary to green your roof when you want to equip it with photovoltaics. That was a challenge for the green roof industry to develop such system which make both possible. When we started to develop the new system, we had to have a look which installation types are typical. One way is to fix the panels with steel parts which are embedded in the waterproofing. But that's a main rule in, in roof technology that you have to avoid each penetration if possible. The second way is to work with massive concrete foundation but you bring a lot of weight and additional work to bring it on top of the roof. A third way is to work with ballast made of gravel or with concrete slabs but this is also an additional product you have to transport. Sometimes it doesn't matter to work with foundation made of concrete. In this case, that's the car park of the new exhibition center in Stuttgart, it was possible to work with foundations which had more than one ton per piece. But it's clear, where concrete is, nothing is, can grow and the ecological effect is reduced.
On a typical flat roof, as you see it here in the picture, it is possible to bring an additional ballast of perhaps 150 or 200 kilograms per square meter. But as you see, it is possible to combine such a sedum carpet with photovoltaics. But this works only because the weight of the substrate serves as ballast against wind uplift. To make it possible to use the weight of the substrate as ballast against wind uplift, it was necessary to develop solar base elements which a dimension of 1 by 2 meters, for example, where solar frames, which bring the distance to the substrate, can be fixed. These together, the solar base and the solar frame, is a system which is very lightweight and has a lot of advantages. The main advantage of the system is that you can avoid any penetration of the waterproofing membrane. The second advantage is that you have to work with heavy concrete and that you can avoid high point loads. Also the height of the solar frame makes it sure that there is no shadow on the panels. Now let's have a look on some projects realized in Germany in the last 10 years. One of the first projects you know from the introduction is the primary schooling on the Ensingen. There were 200 panels installed in 2002 with an electric power of together 23 kilowatt peak. This picture was taken one year later and as you can see the vegetation is well established in the sun also as in the shadow under the panels. A lot of projects were following. One of the next was this sports center in Heidelberg where an electric power of 48 kilowatt peak was installed. That's double as much as in Unterensingen before. On this project, the district office Tübingen, the panels have together have an electric power of more than 100 kilowatt peak. The next slide shows a project of the company Lieper in Linda, and there we had to calculate with strong winds coming around from the Lake of Constance, which is nearby, but it works very well for now six years. The next step in the development of the solar system was to find a solution to combine it with a fall protection system. And as you see here, it was possible to combine it with the so-called fallnet rail system. As you can see in the following pictures, the solar system itself is very flexible. You can combine the solar base plate with different frames of different material or different shape and you can combine with the fallnet protection system or not, both is possible. That's another project in Nürtingen, my hometown. On this project, the Max Planck School, the students can make some measurements on the panels. This was an existing green roof and the owner of the building, a landscaper, had the idea to realize there a small power plant. And as you can see, it works.
an die shopping center the inn center in landsberg lech that's situated a few kilometers south of munich there is space enough for a huge solar plant and they decided to realize one now i would like to show you some installation steps on the inn center the first layer was a drainage element covered with filter sheet on which the solar base plates were installed. Here you can see the huge amount of solar frames made of aluminium in storage. The next step was to fix the solar frames on the solar base. This picture shows a part of the roof after installing the 4000 photovoltaic panels. The roof area itself is more than 22,000 square meter and the electric power 650 kilowatt peak. This aerial view gives you the best impression of the huge inn center in Bavaria. Another interesting project is the yttrium in Cologne. The name yttrium comes from efficiency and atrium, an inner courtyard. On this new school in Neckarwind there is also realized a combination of green roof and photovoltaics. This building got a lot of awards in the last two years. And the last project I want to show you is the Munich Technology Center. As you will remember a few slides before, in Munich it isn't necessary to bring a green roof when you want to build a solar plant. But you see, it's possible also in Munich. Most of the projects you have seen in the last slides are situated in southern Germany, where the solar radiation is much stronger than in northern or in the western parts of Germany. But as you can see on the right map, even in the northwest part of Germany you have a dark color. That means that there is more electric power installed on roofs than in the white parts. It's interesting there also. You can increase the electric output of solar panels by cooling them. If you are on a roof, you have to bring additional water when you have a green roof. There is so much water in the green roof buildup that by the effect of evaporation it comes to a cooling effect. On a green roof you have only temperatures of about 35 degrees Celsius instead of 60 degrees on a gravel roof or 80 degrees on a naked roof. As you will know, a photovoltaic element is a kind of semiconductor. And machines where a lot of semiconductors are built in, for example computers, have to be cooled when the surrounding gets too hot. The standard test condition of photovoltaic elements it's a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. If the temperature goes high the power supply of the photovoltaic modules decreases. One degree more means a half percent less of effectivity. To talk about this cooling effect is one side. On the other side we wanted to prove that it's true what I said. Therefore we decided to work with different conditions on our own roof. As you can see, we tested panels on a naked roof with distance to the waterproofing or 
very near the waterproofing and the other panel is on the green roof. We determined the following curves of the temperature in July 2009. The red curve shows the air temperature above the roof. The grey line and the black line shows the temperature on the panel over the naked roof. There is no significant difference, but the green line shows the temperature of the panel above the green roof. It's nearly the same as the air temperature. Let's have a look in the period between sunrise and sunset. As you can see, there's a difference between the panels over the naked roof and the panel over the green roof from about 6 degrees Celsius. That means there is 3% more electric power. That's very interesting. The good planning is the requirement for each green roof. And the good planning is more important if you want to combine a green roof with photovoltaic elements. You have to consider the distance between the panels, you have to consider the weight of the substrate because it serves as ballast against wind uplift and so on. The problem at this project in Munich was the high wind speed, so that we need a lot of ballast against the wind uplift. But it wasn't possible to bring so much ballast, therefore we decided to start with the panels a few meters beside the edge, where the uplift isn't so high. That was a good solution and it works well. In this case, you can see the shadow of the panels and the distance between the different rows must be wide enough that the shadow makes no problem. Here you can see a photovoltaic modules on a pitched roof. Here it's very important to have a closed vegetation in a short time so that you have no problems with erosion and therefore it may be necessary to irrigate or to fertilize. At least it is very important that the different persons who work on such a project work good together. The architect, the module supplier, the roofer, the landscape contractor and the solar cell installer. Incorrect planning and incorrect maintenance can lead to problems. The chive you see, the chive you see uh, directly in front of the panels decreases the efficiency by shading. In combination of green roof and photovoltaic is possible in nearly all climate conditions where the radiation is high enough. Sometimes you have to leave the normal way. Here in Switzerland and this market you see a special construction made of wood. The distance of more than a meter between the substrate and the panels is necessary because you have to calculate with one meter of snow in winter. Now at the end of the presentation it's time to make a conclusion of all this. 
I hope it was possible for me to demonstrate that there is not only the way to make a green roof or on the other side to make a photovoltaic roof. The combination of both is perfect. No? The weight of the substrate, that's the ballast against wind uplift, the cooling effect of the plants, of the vegetation, leads to a higher efficiency for the solar power and at the end you gain more money and you do also something for the climate.